In this problem, an ugly giant, not all giants are ugly, but this one is, rolls a billiard ball with uniform velocity of 30 meters per second over 60 miles an hour across the top of his desk, big desk. The ball rolls off the edge of the desk and lands on the floor 120 <coughs> meters from the edge of the desk. Now first, I'm just going to use our gut and our understanding of acceleration and average velocity to solve this problem. Then I'm going to show you how to follow the recipe. What we're looking for, ultimately, is how high is the desk? Well, we take the velocity of that ball, and we let that be the velocity of our Energizer Bunny. Because just like the Energizer Bunny, the x part of the velocity doesn't change speed. Now we asked ourselves, how long will it take that bunny to get 120 meters from the edge of the desk? Four seconds. If every second the bunny goes 30 meters, it's going to take four seconds to get to the 120 mark. Now we're told that that ball lands 120 meters from the edge of the desk. And we know that it lands right on that bunny rack. So, how many seconds before the billiard ball hits the ground? Four seconds, four seconds. Okay, now let's go and look at the motion of the ball that, that's dropped straight down. How fast will it go, be going? Well, first of all, when does it hit the ground? <coughs> Same time as the other ball, four seconds. So, how fast is it going right before it hits the ground? Yeah, we add 9.8, let's call it 10 meter per second every second. It's, it's going to be going 40 meters per second right before it hits the ground. Think of going up to the top of that cliff and dropping a pebble, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, splash. Okay? Now, if it's going 40 meters per second right before it lands, how high is the table? Do I want to use the fastest speed of 40? Do I want to use the slowest speed of zero? No, I want to use the average speed of 20. Halfway between zero and 40 is 20. On average, this ball is dropping 20 meters each second for four seconds. How high is the desk? How high is the desk? 80 meters, 80 meters. You just got that. Uh, just by using common sense. Now, if I look at if I look at that orange ball as it leaves the desk, it's going at 30 meters per second. And that's a T equals new. At t equals noon plus one second, its velocity in the x direction has not changed. But now, nature has taken the zero in the y direction and added 9.8, let's call it 10, down. Now, if this ball had a speedometer, the speedometer would not read 30, it would not read 10, it would read the magnitude of the total velocity vector. And that would be 30 squared plus 10 squared square root. And if I asked you what angle it was traveling at one second afternoon, that angle would be the inverse tangent of the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now, at two seconds afternoon, this is still going to be 30 meters per second. But now, we take the 10 meters per second down and add another 10. So now I've got 20 meters per second. And now, the total velocity vector is going to have a magnitude of 30 squared plus 20 squared square root. At t equals noon plus 3 seconds, this is still going to be 30. And now this is going to be 30. And what angle is it going at, folks? 45, okay? And the speed is going to be 30 squared plus 30 squared 
square root. Now, this is right before it lands at t equals noon plus four seconds. The x part is still going to be 30 meters per second. The y part is now going to be 40 meters per second. And folks, that's a 3, 4, what's this going to be? 50. That's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And what will that angle be? Not 37. 37 is when the 30 is over here. It will be 53 degrees. Okay? That's how fast it will be going right before it hits the ground. Now, folks, you can never wait for it to hit the ground. When I say the acceleration is 9.8, let's call it 10 meter per second per second down, that's only during free fall. And so that means we have to look right after it leaves the table and right before it hits the floor, okay? We can't let it hit the floor. Now, I'm gonna show you how to solve this problem without your brain. This is the way you do it with the recipe. The most important step is this line right there. That line separates the x part of the problem from the y part of the problem. Where I'm going to use a standard coordinate system where y is up and x is to the right. Now, with one dimensional problems, I had a list of five variables. With two dimensional problems, I have two lists with the same five variables. Only now, I use y instead of x. And I have to keep straight the x part of the acceleration and the y part of the acceleration. The x part of the initial velocity and the y part of the initial velocity. The x part of the final velocity and the y part of the final velocity. But time is time. It's the same in both lists, and that's what makes these problems even easier than the one-dimensional problems. Because if you can find time in one of your lists, you can move it over to the other. Now, let's look at our problem. As soon as that ball leaves the table, the, the desk, it's in free fall. In this coordinate system, that means I've got 10 meters per second per second. Notice I don't put a minus sign there because I'm labeling a vector. But when I put it into my list, I have to indicate the direction with the minus sign. Negative 10 meters per second per second. I also know that it starts with an initial horizontal velocity of 30 meters per second, and there's no vertical velocity, so that's zero. Now, I also know that it lands 120 meters to the right of where it started. So my delta x is 120 meters. Now, if I want to know how high this desk is, which of those variables is going to tell me that? Delta y. Delta y. So this is my goal. Find delta y. Now, if I, if I need delta y, I have to use this list of variables. But you'll see that I only have one, two pieces of information there. I need three to plug and check. So what I do is I use my information over here to find time. I bring time over here. Then I'll have one, two, three pieces of information. Now it looks like we have three pieces of information in this column. But in truth, we have four. The fact that this is zero means that these two will always be the same. I have a bank account, a savings account over at First Security. That bank account has a 0% interest rate. I always know what's in the bank account because every month they take what's in there and they give me zero more. Every month. Free. <laughs> and so that, that amount just never changes, okay? It's the same thing here. The acceleration is what nature gives you every second that goes by. It says take the 30 and next second add, add zero to it, and the second after that add zero to it, the second after that add zero to that. You're always going to end up with the same thing. Now, if I want to solve for delta t, I use this equation. 
Delta X is equal to V initial X delta T plus one half AX delta T squared. What's AX? Zero. Okay, so this equation becomes 120 meters is equal to 30 meters per second delta T. Delta T is equal to four seconds. I didn't use my brain. I just plugged each other. So I put four seconds here. I put four seconds there. Now I've got one, two, three pieces of information. That makes this the who cares. If, if I don't care about B final, I use that third equation in the kinematic list. Delta Y is equal to B initial Y delta T plus one half AY delta T squared. Well, that's zero times four plus one half times negative 10 times four squared. Well, four squared is 16. 10 times 16 is 160. Half of that is 80, and there's a minus sign. So it's minus 80 meters. Minus 80 meters. I would ask you, is the giant's desk minus 80 meters tall? No. no. The displacement of the ball is minus 80 because it dropped. It ended up 80 meters lower than it started. But if I want to know how high the desk is, I got to take the absolute value and say it's 80 meters tall. Okay, see if your neighbor understood how to do that without your brain, just following the recipe. Now, if, if I had plugged and chugged, if I had plugged and chugged, I could easily find that V final in the Y direction is equal to V initial in the Y direction plus AY delta T. That's going to be 0 minus 10 times 4, or negative 40 meters per second. Now, right before it lands, right before it hits the floor, its X velocity is 30. and its y velocity is negative 40 or 40 down and that means the total velocity is going to have a magnitude a speed the reading on the speed meter of 30 squared plus 40 squared square root which just happens to be 50 and this would be 53 degrees so again just by following the recipe I get the same answers as if I just use my my gut. Now, questions on that problem? Let's look at the problem that you turned in today. I notice as I received your homework that many of you had that wrong. That's okay. Those are little points. You want to make those mistakes before the midterm. A plane fires a bullet with an initial velocity of 100 meters per second at an angle of 37 degrees below the horizontal. The bullet lands two seconds later. As always, we're going to ignore air resistance and we're going to assume that G is 10 meters per second per second. You're asked to find how high above the level ground was the plane when it fired the bullet. Many of you said 120 meters. That's not right. Okay. How far does a bullet travel in the horizontal direction? Many of you said 160 meters. That's right. Find the magnitude of the velocity, the speed, right before it hits the ground. Okay? Now, this time, we're going to do it without our brains first. Okay? We're going to do it with the recipe. There's the bullet leaving the barrel of the gun at an angle of 37 degrees below the horizontal. As soon as it leaves the barrel, it's in free fall. 9.8, call it 10 down. Now, we set up our list. That's the first step of any one of these solutions. And we do it in the context of our coordinate system. Now, in free fall, the first thing you put into your table is the acceleration. It's, in this coordinate system, going to be 0 in the x, 
and negative 10 meter per second per second in the water. Okay? Now, folks, this is going to be the most important question you're asked all day unless someone asks you to marry him or her. Okay? Where does that 100 meter per second go in my table? Where do I put that 100 meter per second? What? It doesn't go. What? Where? It doesn't go. It doesn't fit. It's not in the x direction, it's not in the y direction. You've got to break that vector up into its x part and its y part because nature does. Nature treats those two parts differently, and you have to if you want to understand nature. Okay? So this is a three, four, five triangle. Three times twenty-four times twenty-five times twenty. Now when I put it into my my table. The x part is positive because it's to the right. The y part is negative because it's down. Now, again, I don't put the minus sign here where I'm labeling a vector. The vector has an arrowhead that tells me it's down. Now, I'm told that the time is two seconds, so I get to put that in there. I have one more piece of information, and that is, if this is zero, and it always is in free fall, this will be the same as that. So the final x velocity is 80. Now, the first question asked how high was that plane when it fired the bullet, if it flew through the air for two, minute, uh, two seconds before landing. So that's going to be my delta y. I'm looking for delta y. And at this point, it's just plug and chug. I take my p initial, I plug it in there. I take my time, I plug it in there. I take my AY and I plug it in there, and I just turn the crank. And you'll notice that I don't get 120 meters. Now, it turns out that 120 meters was the most common wrong answer when this was on an exam. And here's how people got that wrong answer. They took that 100 meters per second, they broke it up into two parts, 80 meters per second and 60 meters per second. And then they used the fact that it was flying through the air for two seconds to say, well, in two seconds this would go twice as far, and this would go twice as far. In other words, they pretended that they were on the planet Narang and that this bullet went in a straight line like a laser beam. And if this was 60, they said that's 120. And if this was 80, this was going to be 160. The problem is, in the x direction, it stays constant. Every second that goes by, this bullet travels in the x direction 80 meters. So 160 meters is the correct answer for the x motion. But in the y direction, this thing drops due to gravity. And if I look at this, if I look at this equation, that's the Narang part that gives you the 120. That's the Earth part that gives you the curvature due to the gravity. And so you get the 120 and an extra 20 because things are speeding up. Now, let's do it. We just did it with the equations. We've got three minutes. Let's do it with our gut. At t equals noon, this thing has an 80 meter per second x part and a 60 meter per second y part or 100 meter per second total. At t equals noon plus one second, this is still going to be 80. This is now going to be 70. At t equals noon plus two seconds, right before it lands, this is still going to be 80. But now what's the y part going to be? also 80. And what angle is it going to be going when it, when it hits the ground? 45 degrees. 
And this total speed is going to be 80 squared plus 80 squared square root. Now, folks, if you're looking at how far this thing drops in the two seconds, do you take the fastest vertical velocity of 80 or the slowest of 60? The average. And the average halfway between 60 and 80 is 70. On average, this bullet drops 70 meters each second for two seconds or 140 meters. Whether you use your gut or whether you use the equations, you get exactly the same thing. Folks, we'll practice this some more on Wednesday. It's easy. Trust me, it's easy. Remember to make your two lifts. 